Hi, welcome to Mic Up or Shut Up. This is episode 14. I'm here with my sister-in-law, Angie. Hi. Her husband, my brother, Chris. Hello. My husband, Big Dog Bodie. Big Dog, Big Dog. And I am Reagan. And before we begin, I would like to say that I wanted to introduce us as a game show, but no one would let me except for my husband. <laughs> so if you think that would be fun for me to do, please, please let us know so that we can all overrule Chris. I think it would be fun. I'm well, voting right now. I heard it, and I'm telling you right now, let's not do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's if you vote for it, it's your fault. That's all I'm saying. It would be great. Yes, it would be great. <laughs> we got a good show today. Do we? Don't we have a good show? I sure hope so. If they had video, they would really be appreciative of today's show. Because I would get up and do a dance. <laughs> oh Lord! In my ta dun ta dons. <laughs> ta dun ta dons. <laughs> The patriotic to dun to dos Yes, or the hot dog to dun Oh, we want to, do you want to tell that story? No, that's not a good story. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I don't want to hear the story. What the hell you is know that? The okay, I don't know so it's a funny story. She thought it would be cute for Christmas two years ago. She bought me a pair of budgie smugglers. <laughs> you know what budgie smugglers are? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So she bought me two pair. One of them has a big hot dog in a bun with mustard and stuff on it on the area where you might think there might be a hot dog. <laughs> and the other one is just an American flag kind of patriotic type deal. So I said, when do you think I'm going to wear these? And she said, I don't know. I just thought it was funny. She thought she was being really cute, right? <laughs> the following year. No, I, no, wait, no, wait, no. You have to tell them how you opened it in front of your children and had to hold them up. Yes. We always open gifts in front of everyone here, and I had to hold them and say, look at my <laughs> budgie smugglers. Yay. Yeah. Right. So they were... made to get freaky. <laughs> right. So, well, I could also tell them about how I tried them on and things were not in place. <laughs> I, I, would, I would liken it to dental floss. <laughs> So not comfortable. <laughs> no, not comfortable. Pieces and parts were hanging out everywhere. It was very, very not pretty. So, but then the following year, I decided to return the favor. And I find uh, online a website that puts your picture on anything you want. Okay. So I sent them a picture of my face. And I put them on a pair of underwear for her. And so now she has a pair of underwear with my face right where you think the hot dog might go. <laughs> with his mouth open wide and his tongue sticking out. <laughs> that I had to open in front of our children. Yeah. Oh, my so God. We, we shared that, yes. It was an interesting story. It was fun. We had good times. And now we don't buy gifts like that for each other anymore for fear of retaliation. Well, now I understand why you children have psychological problems. They do. <laughs> they, 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 and they should, rightfully so. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, well, that, that caused a interesting uh, stoppage to the uh, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, let's move right along. Let's Moving move right along. along. We should probably play that clip on, you know, some promotional ads and uh, maybe get some more viewers. <laughs> Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. <clears throat> you too can buy underwear like this. That's right. That's correct. Mic up or shut up. Hey, we should make some, that's it. We can make some mic up or shut up underwear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. With the mouth. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying. Absolutely. And we market them as mic up or shut up. Da -da -da -da's. <laughs> now we have to decide if we're going to post pictures. <laughs> no. Wait, what are you talking about? Of the actual underwear, not us wearing it. <laughs> okay, like I quickly not, said no. <laughs> I'm not about to put that on in front of nobody. You should feel special because you got to see all the glory. <laughs> oh, I do. And he loves to wear them when it's time to do laundry, as if to say, uh, like I you, need you to wash my clothes. Like you, a t-shirt, <laughs> when I don't have nothing else to yeah, wear. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's I'm saying. Yeah, it's the only time, yep. Oh, my God. Oh, moving along. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and next. Excellent. All right, so let me go ahead and knock this out real quick. <clears throat> Because so, I know you're tired of hearing me talk about it, but uh, Jesus, yeah, I mean, what can I say? We got, we, we got to talk about something. So, one more time. So, one more yeah, time. the last time, the last time. So maybe until his Alzheimer's. No, no, in. yeah, no. Well, the actor still got something going. So, all right. So, 
the writer strike is over. So uh, what happened was, um, of course, the writers and the actors were on strike, shut down Hollywood, and the actors are still on strike. But the writer strike is over, which is why you know the Tonight Show and all that, all that the late night TV shows and all that shit is back on because writer strike is over. So they they reached a deal where they had wanted you know a bunch of things, a certain amount of writers guaranteed to be hired to work on projects, shit like that. They want a certain amount of money for certain things, which they didn't give them all the money they wanted. They gave them some and blah, blah, blah. So they were satisfied with it. <clears throat> but what's interesting is uh, one of the stipulations that the studios put in the deal was that the writers cannot go on strike in solidarity with any other uh, group of ho in Hollywood. So in other words, they can't go on strike in solidarity with actors anymore. So yeah, so now everybody's on their own. So they agreed to that deal. So, so now the strike is over. Right, the writer strike, the actor strike is still ongoing. Okay. I mean, it's not gonna make any difference. The fucking movies and TV shows are not gonna still have this. They will suck. So it's not gonna make any difference in quality. But they have gone back to work. Yeah. Oh. So that part's over. So. Well, good for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So at least they can pay their house notes and stuff now. Right. I don't know if they had to reach the deal for medical insurance. Right. The health insurance, the, the thing they kept harping on. <laughs> I didn't hear that mentioned when they were yeah. talking about it, so I don't know. We can't but. pay for health insurance. We only worked twice this year. Yeah, well, we can't pay for health insurance either. And we work every goddamn day. <laughs> Heard. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yes. Yep. Right about that, bitches. <laughs> yeah. All right. Writer strike is All right. over. All right. Yep. I'm so excited. that is done. That is done. That is done. Yay. Yay. Well, <laughs> some applause. So let, yep. <clears throat> so you are going to regale us tonight. Uh, this is uh, requested by the audience. Several members of us want to hear stories about uh, you being a police officer. Bad boys, oh. bad boys. And then uh, we had a request to talk about uh, this secretive AI company that's doing some low-handed shit. So we can talk about those two things, I think. Uh, okay. So. Well, my wife is not happy at all about me being the focal point of attention. <laughs> but <laughs> I will still tell you the story of the time that I got my butt kicked totally and completely by a female who was probably maybe 19 years old. By and choice. You got your ass kicked by choice. I don't think I That's why it upsets that. me. I think That's that not. I think you're completely wrong about that. I understand what you're trying to say and the point you're trying to make, but I think it's completely errant. Okay, well we'll we'll let you tell the story and then we'll decide or okay. we'll let them decide. For some background, I was in the law enforcement profession for 8 years. Uh, I did patrol uh and I did detectives, and I also worked a little bit of undercover work and narcotics. Uh, I have some experiences and some stories. I've told everyone that's close to me the stories, but they say they want you guys to hear. So They're great stories. They are. One weekend when I was on patrol, we always had a problem at our local truck stop. After the nightclubs would close down at 2 a.m., they would all go to this truck stop because the truck stop served food. So after the clubs would close, they would go there to get a burger or whatever. You know, when you're drunk and you don't want to go home, this is what you do. This created a crowd of people that would show up at this truck stop and just hang out because they didn't want the night to end. So we would go there and just monitor the crowd. And eventually, after enough time has passed for them to get whatever they needed from the store and the food, burgers, and items like that, we would run them off. Well, we were there one night after the clubs had shut down, and this car drives up. And the gentleman gets out of the driver's side car, engine still running, door open. And he comes and grabs me and says, I need you to come over to my car because this woman that's in the back seat of my car got to get the hell out. I said, okay, okay, I'm coming with you. Hold on, calm down. So I go over to the car, and he says, this girl in my car won't get out, and I want her out of my car right now. And I said, okay, who is she? Well, she's my girlfriend. So, you know, 
Long story short, I had to determine who owned the vehicle and whether or not she had a right to be in the vehicle or not. Turns out it was his vehicle. They weren't married. There was no community property issues or anything else like that. So I had to get her out of the vehicle. So I said, ma'am, I'm going to need you to exit the vehicle because the owner of this vehicle does not want you in it and you're trespassing. And she says, I'm not getting out of this vehicle. I said, well, you're going to get out of the vehicle. It's just going to be one of two different ways. I said, you're either going to come out of the vehicle of your own volition, and you're going to catch a ride and go home for the night, or you're going to come out of the vehicle with me, and you're going to come with me and go spend the night in jail. Well, you're going to have to take me out of this vehicle, she says. I said, okay. <laughs> I guess that's the way it's got to be. So I reach in, and I grab her. And I pull her out of the vehicle, and once once she exits the vehicle, not willingly, of course, once she exits the vehicle, she commences to whip in my ass. You understand me? She's got fingernails that are probably two inches long, and she's scratching me like a caged tiger. I have blood and scratches. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I have pictures of myself. It looks like I had been in a fight with a tiger. She scratched me up and down my neck. And in my mouth, she had her claws like all over, just scratching the hell out of me. And swinging and smacking and punching, poking eyeballs, like literally beating my ass. All the while, a crowd has circled that, oh, right, is watching the whole thing. Yeah, and rem yeah, remember, it is a crowded parking lot, yeah. so there's people everywhere. So everybody circles around. A couple of my officer buddies come over to, to try to assist. And one of them whips out a can of pepper spray and... I don't know if you've ever been around pepper spray or anything like that when it gets sprayed. It's not fun for anybody. <laughs> it's not fun for them. It's not fun for me. It's not <laughs> fun for the people 10 feet down the road. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's not yeah. good. So I told him, no, no, put that away. It's okay. I would rather catch this ass whooping than have to breathe that shit. <laughs> so he puts the can away and, and we try to you know continue to wrestle her on the ground. And she still has her claws in my neck, and, and they're all around my face area, and I can hardly see. So I balled up my fist, and I reared back and punched that chick square <laughs> as I could right in the face. You understand me? The whole crowd that circled around says, ooh, you, like you can hear an audible, ooh. <laughs> the third day style. Yeah, yeah, it was just like that. Ooh, he hit a girl. So after I did that, she just quit. She quit. She completely gave up, rolled over, put her hands behind her back. Oh, she let no us doubt. suffer up, no bring doubt. it to the jailhouse, no problem. Everything was clean after that. Of course, I had to go take an alcohol bath and clean oh. all of myself up and take pictures of all of the injuries and everything that I had. But several, uh, I don't know, several weeks later, maybe months, we go to court because she pled not guilty to this crime that she was charged with, which was remaining where forbidden and probably battery on a police officer um so we're, we're in court and she doesn't have a lawyer so she's representing herself and oh, they want they want to put me on the stand i said okay I'll, so i go get up on the stand and i'm testifying and they ask all kind of questions and afterwards the uh judge says um Officer Barrio, it's written in your report that you punched this defendant in the face with a balled up fist. I said, yes, your honor, I did. And he says, can you tell us why you would have done that? <laughs> I said, because I was tired of getting my ass whipped. <laughs> I literally said that on the stand <laughs> in court. Uh -huh. Tired of getting my ass whipped. I couldn't do it anymore. So, yeah. But it's a lot of people were saying that it only happened to me because I was handling her with kid gloves. Because yeah. you know you try to you try not to handle a woman a certain way, and if I had been forceful with her from the start, then I would never have caught that ass whipping. That's it. You know, you had a channel, and that's what my wife means when she says you chose to get your ass whipped because I didn't handle her like a man. Well, because he comes home that night, right? And I'm like, what the fuck happened to you? And he's telling me the story and showing me he pulls his lip out and he's got scratches inside of his mouth. And I went, 
Why the fuck didn't you hear sooner? Right. Yeah. I mean, you're a big ass motherfucker. Grown men look at you and go, "Yeah, I don't want no part of that." Right. So I don't know. I don't know this why. girl was like five four, maybe one hundred and twenty pounds. She's you know. a scrapper. Yeah. Yeah, but she was. She whooped my ass. She was ready. She was ready yeah. to go. I didn't know she was ready. I thought I was just gonna yank her out the car, put the cuffs on her, and go. Everything was gonna be good. But she knew when she got some space that she was gonna cut up. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's just that's, one. That's no, one that's, of the little stories. Yeah, you know, hopefully yeah. that'll satisfy some of the well, listeners. Actually, uh, let's hear about Operation Blowjob, because I like that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's not what it was called? called? That's no, that's not, that not, not what it was well, called. When I heard the story, that's what I thought it was called. All right, all right. That's what you hoped it was called. That's, that's what, what I would have called it if I had participated. What, what he's talking about is the light bulb, the epiphany that I had. When I was working in operation in narcotics one time, and I was UC, uh, they the the agency that I was working for was trying to sniff out prostitution in strip clubs. So I get there, and the controlling agent gives me hundred and fifty dollars and says, "Here, go in there and try to purchase a blowjob." or sex or any type of sex act that you can pay for. And I said, okay. Well, he gives me the money for the the deal, and he gives me money to spend while I'm at the bar so that I can buy beers or whatever. And it's a strip club because that's where prostitution usually takes place, or at least in this situation that, that was suspected. So I'm sitting at the bar, and I'm drinking a nice cold beer, and I've got naked women dancing around in front of me. And I'm trying to solicit sexual acts. And I realized at that moment that I was getting paid to do what I was doing in that moment. (laughs) And I thought to myself, what better job could anyone ever have than this one right here? (laughs) Um, I don't ever remember you coming home and telling me you got paid to be at a strip club. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I like the one thing I just, yes. That is correct. Yeah, yes. you know. Yes, that is correct. I'm pretty sure every time you came home from an undercover thing, it was about drugs. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, that story did not involve any drugs. Again, correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These stories might be a little more dangerous than you think. That's funny. Yeah, so... No, continue. That's it. Oh, that, was, that was the story, man. See, oh, see, well, oh, yeah, yeah I failed. Yeah, I failed. Thank you. That's, that's, I did not. I was unable to successfully barter a deal for anyone, not even a prostitute or a stripper, to have sex with me or to do any sexual acts to me, not even for money. <laughs> so I was unsuccessful, and uh, that's, you know, that's yeah. when it ended. Yeah. My affair with... Yes. Other people. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm assuming that if the operation had been successful, you'd have been like, Chief, uh, I was unsuccessful. <laughs> I'm running this with a long haul. I'll be coming back here every night until right. we pull this off. Right. We're going we're gonna to make this a long-term investigation. <laughs> I'm going to have to go deep cover. <laughs> no. No. It was. It's just a job that you, that you think is... Way, way funner than you ever imagined it would have been, you know. At that oh, yeah. moment, oh yeah, no, I at that it. moment, oh, no. when I was catching the ass whipping I, yeah, right. in the sure, parking lot, sure, I wasn't really sure. thinking, "How fun is right. this job?" Two but sides it, of the same yeah, coin. In that saying, moment, yeah. it was a really good job. <laughs> did you tell her she owed you a blowjob? <laughs> no, I did not. Absolutely, I'm just saying, it was not something that I was interested in at all uh, from her at that moment. Okay. <laughs> Heard. Heard. Moving on. Yeah. We're gonna, we'll, uh, we got a couple more stories I think you can throw out, but we'll. Uh, I can we'll, probably we'll, uh, some. Yeah, yeah, we'll you know we'll scatter them I guess. Yeah. We're gonna waste them all in one night, but right. Uh, yeah. I like so, it. Right. It's a good idea, but yes, it was a good job when it was good. I don't think it's as good as it is. It was anymore. Oh, I couldn't imagine doing it today. I would never yeah. be able to do it under today's climate and the pressure no. that they're under these days. I don't think. And no. You know, if anyone's listening that does have that experience and still continues to do the job, mad respect to you. Big yeah, box. right. No, yeah. Whew. 
Yep. Yeah, you got balls of steel yeah. doing it today. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. Yep. I couldn't. What else? You All got? right. Well, uh, okay. So the other uh, viewer request we had was uh, to talk about this company called Clearview AI. All right? You know you'll get doxxed for this, right? Well, fuck them. So, yeah, that's what this podcast is all about. People need to know about this shit. Right. Really do. Get it out there. So the reason why you've never heard of this company is because they don't want you to know about them. All right. They were exposed by uh, a female um, reporter for the New York Times. She's a tech reporter. She writes about, you know, new technology, what have you. Her name is Kashmir Hill. She's mm-hmm. the one that exposed them. What's going on? Now, there are other companies that do what they do, but I think they're the largest. At the moment. So, Clearview AI. What they do is, um, and they, they claim they only service uh, police departments like Homeland Security, you know, FBI, local police departments, or, you know, just law enforcement agencies, basically, military. But other companies that do what they do, they do not, uh, they are not bound by, <laughs> by that. <clears throat> okay, so this, so this is an artificial intelligence yes. company that services law enforcement right. and... So Who this, else? FBI, you know, like the CIA, FBI, government. So yeah, just the g- government, all basic yeah. law enforcement. So, right, okay. Yeah. So what they do is, uh, they they have a uh, thirty billion faces logged in their database. Okay, which there are more than thirty billion people on the planet, which means that they have multiple images of one person, basically. So what they do is, uh, one example is a uh, the police department can uh, take some security footage of somebody committing a crime. And then they, they'll pay these people, they'll give them the picture, and they'll run it through their database. They, what they do is they scrub images from, you know, uh, like all Facebook, social media. Yeah, yeah, all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that shit, anywhere where people post their face and then uh, reveal information, personal information about themselves. So they'll run, run this image through their database to try to link it up with, you know, an image they have. So they can say, oh, this is, you know, this is Chris Rogers. Right, this is his page, and, you know, and he lives here, and blah, 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 you know, get all kind of, so they can track him down and arrest him and all that kind of shit. Which, that sounds great, great and all on the face of it, except that they're taking your image and using it without your knowledge. You know, they're just running around the internet, taking people's images without their permission, and using it against them, basically. So, and you know, most, sta- some states have a thing where you can request it. To be taken off their database, but there's only like two or three states that do it, so yeah. basically you're screwed if they're in there. Well, so wait a minute, you're saying that the company is taking these images from social media and all over the internet without people's knowledge or without people's authority. But the problem that I have with that is that once you post your image on the internet, it no longer has an expectation of privacy, right? Well, no, not necessarily. Say you, uh, well, let's say you, you have um, a private Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, that's right. Say you have a private Facebook page. Facebook. That nobody else can see? Right. That, that, that you, you don't want, well, that you only want you certain your, people, your yeah, certain people to see or whatever. Yeah, they, what they, and, they, and they'll do all kinds of stuff like so that. So how do they get to it? I, I don't know. I that's don't what they're know. saying. They so have hacking. Saying well, they're hacking. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know exactly how to get stuff, but they get a lot. And like, it's not only, like the, the AI is so good at recognizing your face. That you could be wearing a mask, like for COVID, because of COVID, and it would still recognize your face. Sure. You know? So well, that's how good it is. Also, the right. lady said that there was a picture taken of, not even taken of her in D.C. Right. And yes. the AI recognized her face. Yeah, she was in, in a the picture background. that she was in the background, in the like background. way back in the sure, background, yeah. and it still sure. recognized her. Now, it's, now see, <clears throat> you could say, you know, like they've used it to find like child predators and stuff like that, you know, because they had images, they knew who it was, and they were able to track them down, which. Great, mm-hmm. you know, no problems with that. But the thing is, like all technologies, it could be used for evil, not just for good. Sure, you know. And sure. so, uh, one thing that's happened with it, which I think is completely shitty, is uh, of course we they Clearview AI gave this technology to the Ukrainians for mm-hmm. free to use against the Russians. Okay, so the the use was supposed to be to to uh, seek out like uh, spies, Russian spies. Okay. And figure out who was, you know. But uh, one of the other things they did with it is that they would uh, take pictures of of uh, dead Russian soldiers, take a picture of them, use the AI to find out who they were, who their family members were. Then they would send the photos of their dead bodies to their family members with a message saying, look what happened because he was fighting in this war. He got killed for, just for nothing, you know, for, for something he shouldn't be doing anyway. 
and and they said to a lot of people because their goal was to lower the morale right, of the Russian people. Right, yeah, you know, which yeah. That is shitty. Yeah. That is absolutely shitty. Can yeah. you imagine? Well, that's the thing about the internet, man, and that, and and because the internet is relatively new to society as a whole, they don't really understand the danger that's there because you think that you have an expectation of privacy for people to not know who you are, where you live, what you look like, yeah. what your date of birth is, and then you turn around and you upload all of that information to the internet that goes worldwide. I mean, it's it's worldwide web, right? That's right. So That's right. the danger is that anybody can take that information and use it maliciously or however they see fit. That's that's something that I think a lot of familiarity with, with the internet and its use in this manner has not been explored yet right. because of the, you know, how new it is. Well, what I, what I initially thought of when I even heard about this was, remember that scene from a uh, minority report with Tom Cruise? No. Man, there's a lot of motorcycles. Uh, no, on, you know what I bet that is? And I took a picture of it the other day because this is how stupid it was. This guy's riding a four wheeler. But it's like those big giant tires. You know how they put on those the big trucks? Yeah. yeah. He's got tires like that Monster on truck. his four wheelers. All right. <clears throat> yeah. On his four wheeler. And, and it sounds that right. loud. Yeah. And if if our microphones the... picked up this idiot, there's this guy riding up down the street being yeah. a moron. And he, yeah. that's exactly what it, he yeah. looks like a moron. Yeah. And, it, and the, he is a it's, moron. It is <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Person. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> so what was I saying? Oh, okay. So the Tom Cruise. Movie, yeah, Minority, Minority Report, Report. Right, the yeah. scene where he's walking around trying to to disappear into the crowd, and every fucking thing is uh, registering who he is and saying his name out loud to advertise to him. Right, mm -hmm. it's doing it to every person that walks by. Uh -huh. I mean, that's the kind of technology we're talking about. It instantly yeah. recognizes you and knows who you are no matter where you go. That's Correct. the kind of that's the kind of right. stuff we're talking about. You know, and uh, I mean, it and it could be used for evil. I mean. Like, imagine, uh, they didn't say this, but I can imagine that blackmail is uh, going to be a very strong motive to use this, to use oh, themselves. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can find somebody going somewhere that, that he doesn't want you to know he's going, and then you fucking have a photo of him doing it. Yeah. And then now you can use it against him, because, you know, the cameras instantly tell you where he is and, and uh, who he is. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Yeah, you know, and, and a lot of people are doing these home security systems yep. with cameras, and they're all uploaded to the cloud and then transferred via internet and networking that way. You know, all of that information, even though it may be pass coded or whatever, is still on the world wide web, subject to hacks and things of that yep. nature. So, people that are obtaining these photos can also be obtaining video of your home and and everything else that's connected to it now we're getting into the tinfoil hat wearing well you know, i mean yeah but i mean that kind of shit but it's not really it's not really that far no, fetched it's, it's not a bad place it's not, yeah there's a lot of bad actors in this world yep yeah and that reminds me of the ancestry.com stuff where you can literally people are thinking oh I'm going to send in a sample of my DNA yep. and find out if I came from Europe or uh, London or N uh, Nigeria or whatever my ancestry is. That's all cute until two generations down the road, your great, great, great grandchild <laughs> yep. commits rape or something and they link your DNA <laughs> to, the, to the suspect and, and it has to be a rel relative of yours, therefore... There's only one that it can be. You know what I mean? Yeah. That DNA can be used in all facets of law enforcement right. and is used that way every right. day. Without right. permission. No, yeah. exactly. The whole thing without permission. Yeah. But because you submitted that sample, you gave your permission. Well, yeah. Yeah, but the but problem not to be is. Used for that, though. Not only that, you gave your permission for your DNA, that, but that person did not give their yeah. permission. So, Correct. in a way. Yeah, the two generations down right. the road person didn't give any permissions. Right. We'll, we'll see what I think is going to happen <clears throat> with this. Is uh, th The guy, I don't know what his name is, but the guy who's in charge of Madison Square Garden, right? He, uh, he has used this AI technology uh, against law firms that are suing Madison Square Garden for a variety of reasons. So, what he does is. Law firm brings a lawsuit against Madison Square Garden. He used the AI technology to go to the, the Facebook page of the law firm, or whatever. And he starts 
getting images of everybody that works there. It doesn't matter if they are actually working on the case to sue them or not. It's secretary, it doesn't matter. If you work at that law firm, they get a list of everybody's faces, they put them in the database, and then if anyone from any of those law firms tries to go to Madison Square Garden to go to a, see a sporting event or a concert or whatever, the cameras at the venue see their face, match up to the database, and then they're not allowed entry into Madison Square Garden. Wow. And, they, and they actually tell them you are not allowed in here until your law firm drops the lawsuit against against us. Wow. Yeah. That's slick. Sounds sounds very awesome. Sounds like exactly like something you'd expect yeah. in the United States of America. Right. And see where I see it going is uh, being used against political opponents. You know, say somebody's very liberal and he's like, I I got an image of this crowd of MAGA, you know, Trump supporters. If any of them try to come to my place of business, I'm not gonna. Not gonna let oh yeah. Some, yeah, you know stuff like that. I can I can see that. Yeah, I can see a, that happening. Taking a full photo scan of yep. the crowd at a Trump rally yep. and then saying I don't want any picture of any of these images people to come in through my yep. my front door. I can see that happening. You know, yep, totally. Or yeah. even just trying to find information against them to to blast them on you know on the internet and to try to get them canceled for doing something you know you know in their well, private life i, I could totally see that she said it happening. was used in january 6th yeah they they do use it they actually do scan crowds to look for people and stuff you know uh which is probably how they found a lot of people that were there in january 6th right right, but, right. Uh, because uh, they sure found a lot of people pretty easily <laughs> they did so a whole uh, lot of january 6th people yeah. but we still don't know who drops cocaine in the white house well they didn't have cameras in that room they don't have cameras everywhere just on yeah. the outside of the white house right. <laughs> we just don't have outside. cameras on the inside of the white house yeah. right but one thing that happened um was a guy was i think it was Thanksgiving, he was going to visit his family. The cops pull him over, arrest him, tell him that uh, he's being arrested as a warrant uh, for his arrest for committing larceny in Louisiana. And the guy's like, well, that's not me because I've never been to Louisiana. And they're like, nope, it's you. Handcuffs, take him to jail. He's in jail for a whole week before uh, they realize that, you know, they use the AI to get, so he has to take images of his face and videos and they realize that the person that they they uh they took a you know I guess a security camera footage of these people uh, a whole bunch of people robbing the store, and uh, they took a still image of one person that looked just like him, and so they used it so the the technology actually matched them and said yeah this is him this is him but it was just because the guy that they took a picture of looked a hell of a lot like him, but it wasn't him right so but in case of mistaken identity he spent a whole week in jail because of this technology the technology is errant. And that that, yep. could, that easily could happen, and that's eventually you got to think that that will make its way to the Supreme Court. Right? Well, hopefully, he's rich now, right? Yeah. Because the same thing happened with polygraph technology when it came out, and people said, "Oh, you connected to this polygraph machine, and this machine says you were lying, so we know that you're guilty of whatever crime it is because that's the question that we asked you." Problem is, is that the polygraph technology was not infallible, right? And it can be flawed, right? So it, that made it to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court says no, it's inadmissible as evidence in a criminal court case. Same thing would probably eventually come down the road for this facial recognition stuff, because it is fallible. It yep. would eventually be inadmissible. Yeah, we'll see. We got to hope. Know. Anyway, yeah, I mean, that's, hope. that's yeah, the hope because no it has gone that way in the past. Yeah. yeah, there's no guarantee. I don't know. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, people are always talking about AI, AI, the dangers of AI. But, you know, I feel like they think AI is going to drop nukes worldwide to try to wipe out humanity and then build Terminators to take out <laughs> the survivors. But Skynet. That is, but that is not what AI is going to be used for. AI is going to be used for, is going to be used by the people in charge. To subdue the little man. I mean, mm -hmm. that is going to be the danger of AI. You yeah. know, it's going to screw the, the little guy, as what all things do. But, well, yeah. I, I mean, I can see how the government could use this. Against, oh, it's dangerous. I mean, yeah, it's, it is it, dangerous, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, the fact that you can't walk outside your house, or hell, you even inside your house, they hack into your damn you know, video feed in your house, they can use oh, yeah. your laptop to look at you. I right. Mean, the so fact I, that they can mimic your voice. Yeah, yeah, that whole, yeah. Is, is, is a, I mean, it's... Well, I mean, it's, yeah, they can mimic your face. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Mimic well, your face and your voice. Yeah, and all of a sudden, it's a new. Yeah, exactly. Plus, steal your identity 
through all of your information. I mean, it's yeah, that's they the, can just be you. That's but the real danger of AI. That's haven't they used Alexa as uh like some kind of testimony or whatever because it records for so long and they were able to like get it. From oh the yeah, it gets cloud. it got turned on by accident because. Because uh, if you say something that sounds like Alexa, right, or it'll come. Well, hell, we did the same yeah, thing. Yeah, we, we actually did this on this podcast. Right. Yeah, we right. said cereal, and it thought it thought we said Siri, and it turned on. Right. So, and that's, so what, that's what happened. It turned on. You and trigger recorded. it, and you didn't yeah. don't even realize it's recording. Like yep. you think you know it's just responding to you, but it actually records, right. and someone can go and fetch that data, but you never knew that. Right. Exactly. Yeah, scary, right? Right. So, but I'm going to tell you what, I was scared long before that. <laughs> Bodie and I went to New Orleans one time, and this was before Facebook, okay? And right. jokingly, he said, oh, you're going to, you know, show your boobs for some beads? And I went, are you kidding? There's girls going wild videos, and I'm afraid to be caught on one. Right, and this this was just videotapes at the time. Yep. I was scared back then that someone had a camera, just a video camera. And now, I mean, you like y'all said, you can't even walk outside and expect to have any sort of privacy whatsoever. Oh. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that story. Because <laughs> if you're taking your shirt off in, on Bourbon Street, you probably don't expect a whole lot of privacy. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right, right, that's, right. That's right. not what you do. It might not have been the it's not what you do when yeah. you're trying to keep your shit to though. yourself. Know yeah. No, but meaning, you know, you know your grandma ain't on Bourbon Street right there, but two years down the road, somebody could say, yeah, I saw could you. could be watching some girl go wild videos. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> I got what you're saying, though, right? That's true. That's true. You know, the online... You can actually watch Bourbon Street live. In yep, it, like right yep, now, I can right. pull up Bourbon Street cameras right. and watch what's happening yeah, right now on Mar Bourbon Mardi Gras is not the only time when they uh, show That's the That's correct. Titties. That's correct. No, they, 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 they show it every day. Every, every day. day. Yep. That's great. Every day. Every day it's going on. Hell, my daughter tracks <laughs> uh, a turtle. You know how that You know how that got started? That old uh, showing your titties on Bourbon Street thing? No, but I know that we say I, titties I, a couple more well, times, I and mean, we might have as, to retitle as, the episode. You know what? Let's, let's, titties, let's, episode titties two. Titties two. Episode <laughs> two point oh. Big old titties. That's Big what, old that's titties. So, okay, so this is a true story. This is a true story. So I don't remember the exact year, because, you know, once again, I didn't do research, because I didn't know we were talking about this. But uh, they, for some reason, they, they canceled the Mardi Gras parade in New Orleans. I, I, I have no idea why they canceled it. So all these people had shown up to see a Mardi Gras parade, and there was no Mardi Gras parade. So, you, you know, when you get a bunch of people together, and they all getting drunk and high, and they looking for something to do, pulling up the shirt was the first thing they thought of. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So they, they show, me your, show, me, show me your titties <laughs> for beads happened because uh, there was no Mardi Gras parade that year, and they had to do something. Right, and everybody went there looking to catch some beads. Right. So you right. got this person. I got some beads. You got some titties. Right. Why don't we broker that's, a deal? That's it. Capitalism. <laughs> Capitalism. Right. Yep. So, you know, we so, can just right. make an arrangement here without the parade, right. and we don't need the parade. And then everybody who was there that night went home and told everybody they could what happened, and everybody's like, that is a great idea. I think I'll go there next year. And so that's how it, uh, that's how, <laughs> that is how it began. And, I love how yep. we just fictionally... Any, Make it all go down. Anytime we talk about 70s. titties, we will talk right. about titties on well, the podcast. Of course, it was in the 70s. So that's what I'm saying. It was in the it was 70s. In the 70s. I thought so it was why, that date. Yeah. Why was it canceled, the parade? I, I have to have a reason. I don't know. I'm looking it up. I mean, come on. Because, like, why? Like, New Orleans, they just have a parade on a whim. Why would they cancel one? Well, they. do you think they've never done that? Hurricanes and other such madness? Okay, her, Mardi Gras is not in hurricane season. So. I don't know. But hurricanes do damage that persists into Mardi Gras season, don't you think? Yeah, but I think they still Mardi Gras it up. Well, what about uh, fictitious viruses and pandemics? <laughs> they still Mardi Gras it up. No, they no, don't. They don't. Well, they yeah, and as we, as no, we they canceled yeah. the whole show. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. When Where were you when yeah, all that was going on? Where were you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, what well, really bothers me, you know, sex sales. I mean, titties, they oh, sell They things. sell. They That's definitely they sell. Yes. Like, I'm scrolling through uh, Facebook, and I'm looking at these reels, and you see this thumbnail on the top of the reel that's got this half-naked chick, and you're like, hey, 
Let me check that out and see what's going on. And you, then you open it up, and the person that's on the thumbnail is not even nowhere in the reel. It's not even there. Like, what is this? You just made me click this thing from this person who's on the half naked, and that person's not even in your little article or whatever. Right. You know? What kind of crap is that? Damn it. I'm just realizing. Baited and switched. I'm realizing right now that what we should have done was we should, our logo should have had a pair of big old titties, and it should have been called Motorboat or Shutter. Yes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> motorboat and, what? <laughs> motorboat or shut up. God damn it. Right? Now we think of it. Now, now we think of the perfect it. title. It's probably taken. It's, it's taken. taken. It's probably, taken. probably is taken. God damn it. Every right? title is taken. We never Look it up. Know. Next week we might have a new show. But we could have made all kind of people click on it. If the logo was just instead of the mouth with the circle, we should have a big rack with the circle, and then how many people would click on it? Oh. Well, why don't we just take out the mic and mouth? put a big boob in it? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Put a mouth on the rack. I'm just saying. Oh, so you want the mouth with a boob in it? I mean, Boy, that's, actual that's next level. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actual motor boobing. Hello. I don't know. We have enough bandwidth for all the people who click on that. <laughs> You've gotten good at doing, like, recognizing then it would be, Every week we'd be like, welcome be, back. <laughs> <laughs> it would be Mike up on. <laughs> <laughs> or Chris would be making the sucking noise. You know? Oh, no. Don't do that, please. I can't, I can't handle it. Oh, my God. Do you remember when that fad was in? There's all the teenagers. Sucking on titties. They never went away. They never went away. <laughs> it never went away. He said it never went away. Went away. <laughs> the big pacifiers. Oh, and the kids oh, yeah, would walk yeah, around yeah. with the big pacifiers. Yes, I do remember that. Thing. Well, that was rage. <laughs> you know why that was, right? That yeah. wasn't. Yeah. That was uh, drug related. Yeah, ecstasy. Yeah, yeah but the yeah. young ones who had no clue about it walking around with it and they weren't I doing ecstasy. I do remember ecstasy. that, though. Yes, I do remember. And you're that. like, you're an idiot. Yeah. yeah, you actually know some people that did that, Chris. Yes, we do know some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, 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 they were they, they didn't have the pacifiers because it was cool looking. They yeah, had them because right. of the side effects and things of the drug. Right. You know, that yeah. was that was what that was. Facts. Ecstasy, ecstasy. <laughs> what makes you body high? Ecstasy, <laughs> ecstasy. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. <laughs> you just reminded me of Justin Timberlake on that. <laughs> <laughs> We are never going to get on YouTube. If you can Bring sing a song. To, I'm sorry. Bring I'm sorry. We're going to get, get strikes against us. I can't sing songs and I can't say hell of a show. I can't do none of the things that I want to do. Wait, is that a thing? What if you imitate? Like, they've got comedians that parody, do imitations. Parody, yeah. Right? All right, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. do those also get demonetized? I don't if know. If you're doing imitations it's a good from question. someone else? That's a good question. I don't know. We could ask them. Yeah. I mean, it's satirical, you which is what mine is. I'm satirical. Yeah, I don't, I don't. You gotta end it with, with like, bring it on down to ecstasy. <laughs> no, no, I don't want you. That's what it reminded me of when you said it. <laughs> oh, JT. Oh, JT. Yeah, that's a good question. I, actually, I don't think they care. I, I, YouTube is so stupid about yeah. their rules that I think if they, yeah, it's weird. There was a guy that that honestly got a copyright strike for playing a song on his YouTube channel. And it was a song that he himself composed. <laughs> and he had to... That's, that, know, that, that, that's what I'm that, sure. That, that really happened. I'm laughing because it is so stupid. Yeah. yeah. YouTube is I believe stupid, it. Guys. And that's why yeah. it's funny. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're really not going to get on YouTube if we continue to say how stupid YouTube is. <laughs> Just yeah. saying. Well, not just, that we want to be on YouTube. Well, we do want to be on YouTube. Do we want to be yep. on YouTube? Yep. YouTube equals chicken. What if we What if we just chose a completely different platform? There are other platforms, yeah, but hardly anybody no. goes on them. So. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. If there were, I mean, there are other platforms to go on that do uh, video and stuff, but hardly anybody uses them, so it wouldn't be worth the time. Although we could I mean, definitely I know. try. We, could we can make them famous. Well, that's true. Oh, maybe then nobody goes because Mike Up and Shut Up's not on them. I know of a couple video platforms that plenty, plenty of people go to. But <laughs> yeah, we definitely we don't... have to change our logo. Then. <laughs> Shut up, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. <laughs> We're not making it on one of those platforms. <laughs> no, no. We don't want those platforms. A lot of those people get fired for being on those platforms. Yeah, true. <laughs> but they don't have to work. No, that's right. They don't care. They got fired. Right. Yeah. They're okay. That's right. So I, I did the, what is it, uh, you you said you were supposed to tell us something about clickbait uh, thumbnail. Oh, well, actually, wait. Before that, there's uh, something we have to talk about. Um, 
Once again, well, I, it, the clickbait thumbnails can happen, but before we forget, because we've been forgetting for like three weeks, and I got trust. Oh, you got to tell Libby. Gotta we got to do Libby that again. That Libby, man, she is she really is coming up on us. every episode. But yeah, she is really on us, making us uh, do things. On so us. tell her the answer so, to her question. All right, so finally, she uh, sent me a commercial for Xfinity. The commercial was called Three Cheers. It had these little kids sitting on the couch watching a soccer game and they're talking, you know, mm-hmm. promoting the Xfinity brand or whatever. Right. And then at the end, uh, one of the kids says uh, something about he uh, he he had to run all the way down the field, something like that. And and the little girl turns to him and goes, "It's a pitch." Right. And uh, so so Olivia asked, "What the hell does that mean? Is that slang for something?" And I was like, "Shit, I don't know." So, and I didn't know either. Yeah. So I asked Did you, you guys. Know? I didn't even. This is the first I'm hearing of this. Oh, how can it be the first you hearing of this when we said it 746 times? No, y'all talked about a commercial. Libby wanted to know about the yes. word, but y'all couldn't remember what the, the word was. So we had to so watch the commercial again. I never. So we watched the commercial again. Reagan. <laughs> We watched the commercial again, and we and uh, we're like, "What the fuck does that mean?" So we look it up on Google, and it doesn't give us an answer. So I was like, "Man, we searched for a good 15, 20 seconds. I think we've done our part." Yeah, no we, we were good. Yeah, I was like, we were well, ready to just we're say, just tell her, "We don't know. Yep, we don't know." <laughs> we gave it all we could for yep. ten seconds. Right, and then uh, <laughs> Reese comes in clutch, and he's like, "I know." Yeah. So we're like, "Okay, Reese, what? Finally, please tell us." And uh, so he filled us in that it was a uh, pitch is what they call the field. Yes. So yes. She, she was correcting. So it the literally little took girl, me two seconds to look that up. Yeah, now that you know the answer. Yeah, now that you, you know the answer. It. It's too late. Yeah. yeah. We already knew the answer. You didn't have to look it up. But if y'all had shared with me, we wouldn't have to wait for Reese. We didn't need you because Reese already came in clutch. Right. Oh, my God. So, so what happened was the, the little girl was correcting the boy who said, oh, it was so tough for them to run all the way down the field. She corrected him by saying, it's the pitch. Right, not the field. Right. It's a pitch, not a field. Right. So that is what it is. In soccer, Libby, the field is called a pitch. There's your answer. Ding, ding, ding. I hope we get a nice reward. A Why is she review? asking people from Louisiana who really don't know She's a lot about soccer? She's asking us so that we'll have something to talk about on the podcast. I think she was trying to help the podcast. Thanks, Libby. Love. Okay. Yeah, yeah except everyone gets love but Reagan. Yeah, I, I know. I know. You can't do your game show <sighs> contestant voice. And Libby gets pitch questions, right? And uh, Libby gets mentioned more on my podcast than I do. That's this is, true. This is an audience-driven show. <laughs> That's why. The audience is number one on this show. I listen to this podcast. Yeah. Are you an audience member? I mean, I would listen to it. I would assume so, I'm an audience so, member submit also. Submit your requests <laughs> through the audience channels. Well, you're not, you're not, <laughs> on, you're not only do you own the company, you're also a client. That's what you're saying. Yeah. You have to comment and subscribe just like everyone else. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we're also going to talk about the uh, clickbait thumbnails. That yeah, I had, I had gave you living. the perfect yeah, lead I, I, I I even and you just help. took I don't, a dump on I don't it, like, I don't like the sneaky segue bullshit. Why? I don't know why I don't like it. Because so, he's uh, not leading it, that's why. No, that's right. I gave so, you. Well. I guess you would rather just stop everything and say, okay, we're done talking about Libby now. The next <laughs> topic on the board is uh, clickbait Thumbnails. That's how you would prefer it, rather than just be a natural, general flow of time conversation. He doesn't into like it. to talk to people, so. Well, that's true. I'm not a people person, Bullshit. so I guess that's the problem. You like to that's talk to me. We talk to each other all the time. Yeah. That's because he likes you. That's right. <laughs> he better because I like him. We're good people. Well. What's not to like? <laughs> oh. Did she just have a contrary opinion? Yeah. She said. Oh, well. damn. <laughs> Clickbait <laughs> thumbnails. Oh yeah, they aggravate the piss out of me. I can't stand them. What I can't stand is it reveals how dumb people are. You know, I mean, have well, I'm I'm dumb because I just told you a story about how I clicked in some bitches all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, like you can now. There's different types of of uh, clickbait thumbnails. Like for example, that's the the kind that I have fallen for in the past, which I will never fall for again. Which is they'll show you some shit like uh, it'll show you the guy. You know, it'll show you um like um I'm trying Andy Griffith show. Uh, just as an example, and it'll show like Andy Griffith like holding an axe over his head and he's swinging it down on you know on uh, Opie, right? And it's like, and and so then it'll say uh, the real reason why this show got canceled, 
And I'll be like, what the fuck? When the hell did he have a swinging axe? So I click on it, like, what the hell is going on? So you click on it, and uh, they Photoshop the axe and Opie in the video. He never did that. And uh, you find out when you watch the video that the show got canceled because of low ratings. Right. You know, that kind of shit. That shit pisses oh, yeah. me off. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's fine. I fell for it a couple of times. That'll never happen again. Now I know what to watch for. But what really, really, really annoys me is whenever they say shit like, uh, the scariest dinosaur you've never heard of. And then the clickbait thumbnail will have like a fucking uh, ocean, a stormy ocean with a little tiny boat that's like really, really like the size of your pinky nail in the photo. And then right behind it is an image of a fucking like giant worm like from Dune or some shit that's like 50 miles long. Right. Right. With a mouth that's so big you couldn't fucking possibly imagine, you know, and... It's got fucking 80 million views on it in two weeks. Yep. I'm like, as if that was a real creature in any right. way. How could that? How could anyone have clicked on that thinking that they were going to find out about the giant 50-foot-long, 50-mile-long <laughs> giant worm that lived in the ocean? Right. I mean, it's ridiculous. The one for me that's that's been that I've seen more than five or six times in the last week or two is the roller coaster with the section of rail missing out of it. Oh, have I you have seen, seen that, that one? one. Yeah, I have it's seen a roller one, yeah. coaster that has a loop. And the top section of loop is missing. Right. And they're like, no way, the, the ride's still running. The ride is still running. Right? And it's clearly the roller coaster just cruises right around where the <laughs> gap is missing. And it's it's obvious that it's just photoshopped out of the Right. They make, it look like, they make it look like the roller coaster jumps that gap. Correct. And it keeps going. Yeah. That's, yeah, right. So terrible. Yeah. Such a terrible yeah. thing. And, but people click on that shit. Yeah. It's got a lot of views Well, I did. I had to. You, well, you clicked on it? Well. I always get, click on the ones that say, like, the top 10 goriest scenes in movies. And, like, it shows, like, somebody's about to get killed in the yep. in the thing. So you go and you read each one, and it's the one that they've showed is not listed at right. all. Yep. Yes. And yep. I'm like, but which one is this? Which right. one is this? It's yep. only there for you to one. click on. Right. That's why. Yeah. So you go in the comments, and people are going, what movie is that one? Like, uh -huh. you know, and sometimes someone will say, well, that was this, but it really wasn't that gory. Right, yeah, right. Whatever. And those always piss me off because, like, I really want to know that picture, what it was. Right. Yeah, that's the classic example of clickbait. See, the thing that's on the, the thumbnail doesn't it, even exist. It, it, right. But, like I said, that. but yeah. that is a true, actual photo. So that, that's what pisses me off about YouTube. That shit should not be allowed on YouTube. Right. Of all things they don't want to allow, that is one of the things right. they should not allow. Right. Well, that's mostly Facebook that I see. Well, of That's course. correct. But you see, the thing about YouTube, though, is that they use a lot of their crap hole rules and regulations, and they apply them in situations where they're not meant to be applied. That's right. And they do that because if they demonetize you, then they're in turn monetizing themselves yes yeah. right yeah because the ad revenues and things from that don't go away it just now comes to youtube instead of to you yep so that's why they find those rules they 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 meticulously pick through every video to try to find something so that they yeah. can demonetize because then that monetizes themselves yeah youtube sucks but uh, yeah. hopefully we'll be on it next month yeah, we'll, we'll be hanging our play button on the wall before long, I'm sure. I'm on YouTube as a thumbnail. Oh, you are. Oh, you, you are. are. And you're a you're thumbnail. thumbnail. You're a clickbait and thumbnail because you're not, not even in the video. Well, I am yeah, shortly she, in, the she video, in the video, thank you. She is in the video, but, but, but in a very short period of yes, time. Yeah, right. It's, so technically it is clickbait because it makes it seem like she's the focus she's of the, the thing. focus of the video, but, right. But I'll take not. it. But she's not. And we will share a link. Of the video oh, yeah. that you are the thumbnail in on our sure. Facebook page yep. for people who to, who want to take a look at your thumbnail of a YouTube video. Perfect example of clickbait. No, Perfect. exactly, yeah. Perfect example exactly. of clickbait. Yep. Coming it. soon. Yep. Well, actually, coming this week. <laughs> <laughs> coming Already tomorrow. There. Tomorrow. Already there. Already there. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yep. I love it. Okay, so... Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, when we blew everybody away last week, we had four fucking movie recommendations in one episode. But we, Did, well, yeah. that's because we felt like, hey, you know what? You are popping off all of your little movies, yeah. So why don't we just throw one out just real quick, just to say the name of one? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so we did that last yeah. week, but I don't want to do that all the time. I'm not all interested. Right. I would all rather right. you have your spotlight and your okay. glory, 
and just sit here quietly. Okay. All right. How about you? You're not going to sit here quietly. That's okay. Wow. As she sits quietly. Yeah, as she, uh, yeah, as she looks with daggers. At... <laughs> but that's the yeah. thing. She will talk when she's not supposed to, and she will not talk when she's supposed to. That's, <laughs> oh, that's when her we game. turn these microphones off, she starts to tell the funniest <laughs> stories you've ever heard. And I'm like, what the fuck? Right. We were just recording for an hour. Where was this story right. an hour ago? That's correct. Yeah. I didn't think of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's oh, all right. Nice. That's okay. Uh, we, you keep skipping. How come I have to keep... Rem- you, you Hold on. Time out. <laughs> Time out. You fuss uh, that you don't get the spotlight and you don't get to do your uh, game show contestant voice and you don't get... Nobody asks you to tell cop stories and you don't get to do movie recommendations and blah, 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 blah. When you have a very specific segment... Dedicated oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. to the thoughts that occur in your crazy head, <laughs> and you, I have to remind you of it every day. What did we decide? Why to call is it? that? What did we decide to call it? Ray we Ray haven't Ray? decided. Well, we, we haven't. We were looking off. for. Names oh, I said Ray random from, thoughts. That's what I. Yeah, but, I but he didn't the say customers. Yeah, he didn't like that. Ray the the, the, the listeners. Yeah. We were looking for suggestions. It is basically. The craziness that occurs in Reagan's head. But that doesn't sound catchy. <laughs> so, I would like to have someone give us an actual title for that segment. Yeah, if you have a good name if you have a good name for that segment, let us know. Yeah. We'll use it. If we like it, we will use it. So, right now, it is time for the segment that is untitled. <laughs> All about Reagan. Ooh. Focus spotlight. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good one. All about Reagan. Yeah, but it doesn't describe the craziness part, <laughs> and that's pretty important. Okay, right? it's but getting it's... redundant. Let's just move on to the actual thought. Craziness, yes. So, <laughs> I often wonder who actually decides what the weather feels like, because I oftentimes think... you will see, right, like. They'll say the temperature is 93 degrees. Feels like 107. Well, what? It's 93, but it feels like 107? How, how do you measure what it feels like? Does somebody go outside for 10 minutes and say, I know it says 93, but I'm pretty yeah. fucking positive. It feels like 107. <laughs> you know? Well, that's, the- that's mathematically, it's called heat index. Do, yeah, they do this no they do feels uh, like on yeah. a lot of stuff yeah, for yeah. hurricanes it's mathematically generated with temperature and humidity <laughs> they well, do they do wind if it sometimes feels like 107 why isn't it 107 right no that's the question that's a good right. point but, but they do wind sometimes like that that i mean they do different aspects of the weather and they literally will put like on the weather app Feels like they don't yes. say heat index. Well, yes. They say feels like. You know that's like. So who decides what it feels like, and can I get right. that job? Right. You want it? I mean, maybe because if it's <laughs> if it pays, well. I, if I can just say, you know what, it feels like Egypt out here, then I want that job. You know, I guess that's sort of like dunking your head underwater and saying it feels like there's no oxygen in this. <laughs> It feels like it's wet in here. <laughs> it feels like drowning. Yeah. All right. All right we got I like it. it. We did it. Yep. There Feels it is. good. That yeah. was the segment that is shall be so shall far be named unnamed. In the future. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> since I did so many horror movies, I'm going to lay off horror movies for a few weeks. Good plan. Yeah. Good plan. So, horror is done. For a few weeks. Yeah. I like it. So, uh, the movie tonight uh, is from 2012. It's called Red Lights. Stars Sigourney Weaver, Cillian Murphy. I think that's how you say his name. And uh, Robert De Niro. Oh, not, De Niro. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. De Niro has been making some, yeah. In his, talking to me? In his, <laughs> in his older age, he's been making some total poo-poo. But uh, he's totally in it for the money now. But um, this is not one of those. This movie is actually quite awesome, even though nobody's fucking heard of it. So the plot of this movie is that uh, Sigourney Weaver and Cillian Murphy go around the country. Uh, like when people, um, 
claim to be able to cure people of cancer. And so, you know, they have, so they go to a stadium and a bunch of people show up and then, you know, they, they claim to cure them of cancer and the donations and stuff. It's like evangelists? Right, exactly, evangelists. evangelists, yeah. So they go around to people like that, all psychics, getting money for people. Snake you know, to, Yeah, exactly. You know, trying to claim to hold seances, anything of, of that nature, supernatural, where they're taking people's money or whatever, scamming people in some way. They go around and they prove that they're fakes. You know, they bring recording equipment and they, you know, they, like they'll, they'll, uh, you know how they've determined that like evangelists will have like the, somebody in the audience will have a microphone and talk to an audience member and then, and then feed them the information so that it seems like the evangelist, you know, is receiving the message from God. Right. But they never right. actually talk to the person, you yeah. know, so that kind of stuff. So then they bring record equipment to record them doing that or, or jamming equipment to jam this, you know, so they go around and they, um, they try to fuck these people up so that they can't pull our scams. Yep. So what happens is, they uh, Robert De Niro uh, claims to be a psychic uh, to be able to communicate with the dead and, all, and do all kind of you know other supernatural shit. And so the uh, Sigourney Weaver actually had a run in with him on television where he made Sigourney Weaver kind of look foolish. So she sort of has an axe to grind with her. She wants to. She's never been able to prove that he's a fake. And so he's come. He he's gone into retirement. He's a blind guy. And uh, so he's going to retirement. So now he's coming out to do a tour out of retirement. So that this is our chance to prove this guy is a fake. And so uh, Cillian Murphy sort of like her assistant. Okay. So they sort of like dedicating all their time to proving that this guy is not a psychic, except that they can't. Every time they try to prove he's not a psychic, that he does shit that they're like, what the fuck? How do they do that? They can't prove it. So the movie is about about them uh, trying to prove whether or not he is a psychic because the further the movie goes, the more you're like, well, maybe this guy really is a psychic. And the harder they try to prove, the they, they can't do it. And it's driving them crazy. So it, it's a, this movie is actually a thriller, and it, it has some interesting interesting parts in it. It really builds up to the end. You're like, it leaves you guessing right up to the very end what, what's going on. And when you find out what's going on, it's pretty fucking amazing. Okay. Actually, I'm not going to tell you whether or not he's a psychic or not because that is the point of the of the movie, but yeah. the ending is actually pretty fucking amazing. I really like sure. it. I really enjoyed it. It's, it's very suspenseful. And what's the title once again? The title is Red Lights. Red Lights. Red Lights. Yep. So All right. Highly recommend it. I like it. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Yeah. I think I saw something similar to it before, but I don't want to give it away. Is that the one where they, they're doing like the televangelist thing and they have a snake that bites someone and then, they no. don't die or something no, I, because uh, they. I no, no, I don't. No, okay, that's not in. All right. that's not in this movie. Okay, neither one. No, no not oh, I'm. One. I'm thinking about Justified. Remember? Anyway, not not <laughs> relevant. No, nope, that's a good show, but no. Nope, yeah, you liked it. I did, did like see? Justified. I did yes. like Justified. But you know they got another one. Yes, Justified. I haven't seen that one. Oh yeah, I yeah seen that we're one. watching it. Okay, yeah, it's good stuff. All right. All right. Okay. Well, all right then. Uh, guess we're done. I guess we're done for this week. We're ready to say goodbye to everyone. Make sure you like and uh, hit the buttons and yeah. comment and all that stuff. Yeah. We're glad you're here. And don't forget to let us know if you would like me to introduce the show <laughs> in my game show voice. That's right. Make sure you're vocal with that because Chris is not going to read all of the behind-the-scenes stuff. So you have to be like on Facebook or Twitter or somewhere where he's going to see it to make sure that it's uh, it's really a thing that happens and if you would really like you can let us know on facebook and i will send you his telephone number so you can leave him multiple voicemails <laughs> not that he will listen to them <laughs> just saying no. it will still aggravate him well, i'm gonna do my thing and say big dog out bye bye later <laughs>